Welcome back to the most professional StarCraft 2 with the reigning world champion, the Terran in the red from Team Liquid. It's Clown. But up against his Zerg counterpart in the blue, we have Shin. A best of three Terran versus Zerg showdown. Whether we see if today Clem has mercy on the poor Zergs, or if he's simply done with this Shin. Either way, it'd be awesome if you could help the algorithm have mercy on me by smashing that like button. And, and maybe even subscribing. And Jimmy, what are we at? 1,448 likes on this video on this cast. I'll cast another one. And I'll, I'll probably do it anyways. But thank you for watching. Hopefully, you've had a good day so far. And hopefully, it's about to get just a little bit better than this SCV who was sent out early. Shin snuck six lings out behind. Just a little bit quicker spawning pool than you're used to here. Actually, I think it may have been a, a pool first overall. No, not quite. But the queen is already out to throw things down. Lays down a creep tumor. Clem can't help himself. He's got to go for it. And oh, no, no, not this time. The Reaper goes down. Brenda gets her revenge. And now the Zerglings show up in the natural. This is a worst case scenario. The SCV trying to finish the command center, but still a few seconds away. Oh, wow. It doesn't get much worse than this. This is the worst. Po Okay, now it's the worst possible scenario. He's not going to cancel the command center. He's going to lose another SCV. Three SCVs. I'm so good at counting. Four, maybe? Yeah, four SCVs in total. The rest will be shut down. But Shin, with the best possible start, all right? If you were going to do a speed run of this sort of game, you'd start with this seed. But, unfortunately, Clem isn't one to play by the rules or make it easy for you. But so far, so good, as Shin is able to kill off a significant portion of the economy. He dealt with the Reaper. He didn't even lose the Creep Tomb. So, uh, about as good as it's ever going to get, and probably more than he could have ever asked for. A good little, just a, a good old-fashioned Zerg rush. Not enough to really cut into his economy if it didn't go well, but enough to potentially do solid damage, as we saw, if it does go the right direction. So how does Clem dig himself out of this relatively shallow yet emotionally damaging hole? And <clears throat> well, three command centers is a great start. Three orbital commands give you enough economy to compete even with a Zerg who's pumping out the drones just like Shin is. He's going to have Banshee cloak on the way. I'm sure Banshees as well unless they're cloaked from the production tab. So back to the usual tools in order to keep control of the situation. A bit of a desperation move, but Zerglings and the SCVs, not the SCVs, the Zerglings surrounding the Hellions and knocking them out. A desperation move out of Clem, sending those in, sure. There's no Zergling speed done because Shin went for this kind of gasless pool opener. But three Hellions with Queens on patrol and even some Zerglings to absorb the damage. Not really a... Uh, and he just lost all sort of map control that he could have had to deny the creep tumors to continue to pressure the zerglings. So Clem, uh, certainly not making too much headway with those early Hellions, but an offering blood for the blood god. Shin, so kind as to send a drone across in order to make it a little more fair. Um, not sure what that one was about, but... Now opting for a lair. Roach Warren is on the way. The lair is relatively... Eh, it's pretty quick in the grand scheme of things. But uh, it doesn't have too many drones behind it. At 55 and counting. And Clem is quickly catching up in the worker count. He's already landed his third. There's not going to be any sort of anti-air to contest the Banshees on Clem's side of the map. Of course, the Queen's back at home. The Banshee is working on the hatchery. A spore crawler is moving its way down. The Banshee may very well be able to cancel the hatch, or at least do enough damage that uh, Metavags can follow it up later. Now the Queens. Remember when we used to be able to fly? Susan, so help me care again. If you say that one more goddamn. <clears throat> the Queens, well, Banshee's out of energy. Queens. Not the quickest creep. Oh, another Banshee. Kind of happens in, but just kiting around, playing ring around the hatchery. And the Banshee does out-damage the building. He's going to get it, isn't he? 
Is this going to be another Reaper scenario? Honestly, I would just let it finish. Like, let the hatchery finish and kill it with eight Marines later. That's very likely what's going to happen anyways. Um, but I guess a couple Hellions caught in the Watchtower. Not exactly a uh, ideal engagement angle directly into a tunnel of fire. Um, but, uh, Clem, hello? The Zerglings are in the third, and the SCVs are the only thing there to defend, but the Marines will stim in. And the, I don't think a single SCV died. The SCV drilled into the minerals there to reduce the surface area and did not lose any more of them. He's lost four in total, just those initial links. So, not actually that much damage at all. And Shin has slacked a little bit on the economy. He's only had 67 drones. He's building 10 more now. But Clem is up to 66 workers, which is full three base saturation. Then you slap the mules on top, baby, you got a stew going. And that stew is cooking up uh, an income lead for the Terrans and a series of small to moderate face palms from me internally. <clears throat> the Marines. Trying to make good on what the Banshees started, but the Roach Ravager in position. Counterattack attempted, but more than enough standing their ground to throw it back. Roach speed is on the way. Oh, Shin forgot Roach speed. There's no reason it should have been that late. Like, a hive has already started. Roach speed probably should have started before that, especially with this mass Roach composition. But 84 drones against 72 SCVs now. Shin was able to get a lot of creep spread out there before Clem got his first medevacs out on the field. Those medevacs almost impossible to deal with directly. You just got to deflect them, ideally until you get at least vipers, maybe hydras, maybe corruptors. But anti-air is a bit sparse for the zerg, especially in the mid game. The marines just kind of running their way forward. Another double drop and there's that hatchery again. Uh, queens keep it together. The transfuses. And a bit slow on the pickups. Clem. Uh, uncharacteristically. Not lackadaisical when it comes to the medevac drops. But losing about a dozen marines across the board while Shin brings hived. Oh my god. Adrenal glands from Shin. The moment a hive finished. Who sent in my YouTube short? I'm sorry to call you out specifically. But I'm so proud. Alrighty. Shin finally. Ready to graduate. Well, actually, he's pretty much... I think he's ranked 10 in the world right now. But a top 10 player. Adrenal Glant. Honestly, a solid 10 to 20% of his games. His losses especially could be attributed to forgetting Adrenal Glands exists. But the moment the high finish... This is some new shin right here. And some beautiful shin indeed. 40% attack speed on Zerglings is kind of a big deal. You don't always, uh, the Zerglings aren't always able to start nibbling on the Terrans, but when they do, it makes a massive difference, especially dealing with, like, planetary fortresses uh, or other sorts of defenses. Meanwhile, though, deflecting left and right. Clem trying to keep the pressure on, whereas Shin is building up. He's consolidating that Zerg economy. He's built up such a uh, solid infrastructure. The creep spread is good. Clem, though, still... Maxing out, and there's the Ghost Academy on the way. And so it begins. The timer has started. Oh, parasitic bomb! Quarantines a couple medevacs, but there's still energy for more. He can double up on it. One more parasitic bomb secures the kill, and with all Marines inside, well, he had four of them, but all four. Spore Crawler targeted, picks up, gets out. 2-2 about to finish for Clem, just trying to keep the pressure on. He, he, at this point, he's trying to buy time until Ghosts. But that time is starting to run out. Dodge and Cross about Banelings connecting. But Shin doing a great job of keeping the pressure on. Just a casual 1,000 APM or so right now. The Banshees are helping to deal with a handful of Banelings on that left side. And Shin has always been a very fast player. Sometimes arguably too fast, in my opinion. But speaking of fast, Ultraless Speed is now on the way. Kiteness plating already completed. She had not slacked on the upgrades at all this time around. And the creep spread is looking great as well. Honestly, Shin has everything going for him, but... Well, that was in the script. The Clem... 
definitely just uh, a day late and a dollar short on a lot of the medevac micro so far. Clearly, uh, a bit slow. I don't, I don't. I almost uh, maybe ping. I don't, it's so blatant that I have to point it out, but uh, I'm not exactly sure. That not to take away from the fact that Shin is doing everything right right now. He's getting the connections. He's stressing Clem to the point that he's making these mistakes. Doesn't matter if he's playing with a thousand uh, ping. Clem not going to lose a medevac on its own. But the blinding clouds are amazing. The ghosts weren't quite on the front lines to stop. He blinds even more tanks as the Baylangs roll through. And now Ravagers and Roaches still not going to be quite enough to break the Terran defenses. But he cleared out the tanks and he forced back the bio line. And Shin, five Ultralisks. 46 more Zerglings, and it would be more if he wasn't already maxed out. Clem trying to find a small opportunity to carve away some of the creep, but Shin can bring it right back up to the front. He's got the Queens. He somehow kept that hatchery alive, though the Vipers are, are sipping. Oh my God. He just yanked. He yanked a Banshee into the other parasitic bomb. The alley-oop works out perfectly. He wants to get rid of these roaches. Killing a few SCVs would be nice. Free up supply for some more Ultras, for some more Vipers. And there's the Spire on the way. Who is this? Shin. Already setting up for uh, a Spire transition, because the big danger now is going to be Liberators, or just the air in general. So why not add in Corruptors, maybe Brutalums? And, oh, the ghosts will get a volley off, but there's so much meat in the frontier. Blinding cloud on the tanks, and almost no target fire on the banes as they continue rolling through. The tanks are actually dragged behind the bane line as it forces back the entire bio army. The ghosts line up their snipes on the retreating ultras. But again, Shin comes back and refills. He's at 82 drones. Glem's still at 79 SCVs. He's got quite... I don't, was that a... Okay, there are like two Zerglings. Shin still has... Can we... Oh my god, he almost consumed his hatch to death. Why not the Evo Chamber? All I want now is the Evo Chamber battery packs. I don't know exactly the math, but if you have enough Queens, and you have enough Evo Chambers, which have the highest mineral to HP ratio of Zerg... Stop doing this to the... Just build like six Evo Chambers and sip on that. You know what? If I'm complaining about how he consumes his buildings, that means he has Vipers alive, which is quite an achievement already. Trying to dodge. Good job on the pullback. Baits the ghosts in. EMP hits a couple Vipers, but that's still so many Ultras. Blinding Cloud used. Just slamming into the planetary. The Banelings obliterated. Few more snipes on the way out, but Shin can reap. Oh, um, Charles? Oh, oh not even close, baby. I don't... Okay, four, four HP. That's plenty. Shin refills. Clem, still, he's actually ahead in workers because Shin is building mass. What? Did he just? Oh my God. Oh my God. He just killed his own ultra. He's like, ah, uh, it's too much energy to transfuse. I'll just build a new. 57 Banelings. Oh, that is so many Banelings. Uh, and he's building more. Shin is looking to smash the world champion. And Clam is slowly but surely building up that supreme late game army. He's given up on, on putting pressure on the map, and now he's building up the ghosts and the planetaries and the liberators. Shin has done a good job, and, and Shin has taken so much of the map so quickly. He can play this war of attrition. He's got to be a little careful, but the blinding clouds are good. The Banelings going straight through. One planetary down. Make that two for the price of one. And the ghosts line up their shots. The front line will falter. But the Banelings did their job. Another base smashed. But 80 Zerglings, two more Ultras on the way. Command Center's floating right back over. Did? Was it worth it? Actually... Shin's been remarkably cost-effective. He's been able to carry this momentum through because he got such a lead and such great map control early. Now Clem, he, he's backed up against his own bases, which means even if he kills things like Banelings, they're probably going to hit something important. 
Shan is playing some of the uh, most solid Zerg I've seen from him. You know, if he covered up the names, I wouldn't I wouldn't doubt it was Cyril. Which is the best compliment I think I've ever given him. <laughs> ah, yes, the coveted winter Cyril comparison. Um, I don't know, put that up on your wall or something. That's People do that. Like a, like a flash drive with a recorded audio. Don't, don't think about it. Just moving on. Make it inspire great again. Clem thinking about taking the gold. The Viper out in front. EMP knocks it out. Pulls back the Ultras. And Badlings rolling by. The Ultras chewing through. He can't get the shots off. Another squadron of ghosts comes up. But the Badlings doing their job of shielding for the Ultras. Ah, uh, that one... Well, he gets an orbital, and he gets, wow, 116 Zerglings and six Infestors. He's not just making Zerglings, he's also adding in the Infestors. Who is this? I don't, I don't know what happened. It's been like, Shin has been, you know, he's, stop, don't, don't do it. Would you stop? Just, there are spine crawlers right there! <laughs> oh my god. <clears throat> Sorry. Um. Alright, take your over-under on whether he consumes his own hatchery to death. Could you? Oh my god, he keeps queuing it up. It might happen. Alright. I mean, there's not much left there. The bait line's rolling in again. And another planetary taken down. And a fungal, but no real follow-up. I... You know, a little late. A good fungal, but he didn't have the time to follow it up. Twelve corruptors on the way. As you can tell, a ghost died. And... Huh. Well, Clem is bottled up. There's creep in pretty much all the other bases, if not a hatchery. He's got the ghosts. He's got 17 ghosts, seven siege tanks, plus three mech weapons. Here come the infestors for another round. Some of the overseers over the top. Not the mass overseer style, but enough that it makes it difficult to make sure you land your hits. And also, oh my. Seven brood lords on the way. Brood lord infester. Hello, darkness, my old friend. Broodlord and Fester still a strong late game composition, though both those units are in order of magnitude less uh, effective than they were back in the day. That still puts them as pretty strong, though. The Broodlords don't have the range. The Infestors don't have the infested Terrans. Fungal doesn't do nearly as much damage or stun, but... It's still enough to hold down the Terrans, potentially interrupt the Ghost Snipes, and break the critical mass. Oh my, it's one of those situations. Got a whole chiropractor's office of spines. The Infestors get EMP'd from the high ground. The Queens, oh no! Oh, triple kill on the Queens. Takes out the Vipers. Wow. Well, Clem with no mercy. He has also no gas in the bank, but there's only like one or two fungals left. The Liberators, the Ghost Ball, he's losing Ghost to Spine Crawlers, which is quite an achievement, as the Broodlords ran him down. The Siege Tanks work both ways. The Siege Tanks are interrupting the Ghost Snipes because of the friendly fire damage. Lines up another volley, and before the Broodlings land, he's able to get a couple shots off. I think this is going... Well, if we're trading over... Again, it's happening in Clem's base. So every time they fight, more SCVs are dying. Shin has brought his base to Clem in this scenario. Ooh, a couple more. Really good fungal. Enough to kill a few more marauders. Not even sure why there are so many marauders. I guess for the uh, ultras earlier. But Thors are here. Six more broods on the way as Shin continues this war of attrition, and he's winning it. He's had the income lead, not by a huge margin, but he, he's mine now. 
4,000 more minerals, 2,000 more gas, which is not nearly the disparity I thought it was going to be. He's mined his entire half the map. And now he's working on Clem's, which Clem is just now realizing as he tries to land this command center. His army is 22 ghosts, and also there are some other units, I guess. Siege tanks. Broodlord, but the infestors caught! The siege tanks took out a couple. The Baneling's unable to close the distance without the fungals. Does he not have cloak? He has both cloaks. All right. The Broodlord's still raining down. Those siege tanks working against Clem yet again. The infestors looking for the fungals. More snipes come through. Another wave of Broodlings. The Baneling's rolling up. The infestor is a bit late to the party. Even more ghosts. Another infestor dodges forward. Looks for more EMPs. Running back. The Banelings, though, being obliterated by the tanks. And chasing it down. I don't know if there's any fungals to cover the retreat. More shots go off. Another volley. He's ended up losing nine Broodlords. He's down to uh, nine Broodlords. That hatchery's still alive. No more Vipers left. Shin, instead of killing his own creep tuber, decided to just, you know, he might have put it here so he can't get sieged from the high ground. That, you know, I don't know how much of this is because that creep tumor's in the way, and how much of this is to avoid getting sieged by Clem's high ground. But either way, it's gonna work out. He's going to be mining from that rich Vespine geyser. And there's a spore crawler helping to provide detection. And maybe even zone out some of the Vikings at the front. EMPs zoning out the infestors, but Clem is bleeding out. Clem has not been able to push back against this late game Zerg army. I gotta say the siege tanks feel like they've hurt as much as helped. Shin has done an incredible job of keeping map control against one of the most difficult to beat unit compositions in the game. Clem has 19 ghosts still. There are creep tumors in like they are in his base. Clem couldn't kill that first creep tuber. He's been regretting it ever since. That's how this all started. Might be how it ends. But again, the siege tanks are interrupting those ghost snipes. Not enough of them. He gets a few more broods. But Clem is running out of real estate. Another wave of changelings. But Shin, more infestors. He's got the uh, rich base. The queens. Uh, the Frenchman assassinating the queens in another revolutionary tactic. But he keeps rebuilding. Well, there are no more queens left. Which is not ideal, but I don't think larva inject matters as much when you have nine hatcheries. Especially when he's building ultras and infestors. Oh no, there's no anti-air! Oh, the brood lords are getting chased down. The three Thors! He can maybe pick them up. He gets one. He gets two. One will go down. The ghosts will cloak, but like to what end? There are infestors all over the back line. Overseers at the top. Banelings rolling in. Shin loses a lot of supply, but replacing it with eight ultras. Clem will not be able to rebuild. He's down to 11 ghosts. The changelings are body blocking the siege tanks. But Shin is looking for the killing blow with nine ultras on the way. That's his entire bank. He's got to kill him now with this. He's building seven queens. Clem, on the other hand, also doesn't have any income. He's down 2,400. This is... Well, he's desperate to mine from here, but he even has to use scans to clear out the creep tumors. There are nine ultras completing. There's not enough ghosts. Even if they had full energy and they were able to line up their shots, I don't think that's enough ghosts to stop this much Zerg. Shin has played an incredible game, and Clem has been unable to turn the tide. So either the trend stops here, or Shin will actually defeat the world champion, at least in one game. The siege tank's doing a lot of damage. I don't see any infestors trying to find the shots, but there are so many ultras. He just can't find an angle. The ghosts are unable to line up their shots on the ultras. There's not enough to stop this, and Clem taps it out before the ghosts can be cloven in twain. Shin, with an incredible game, 
Probably the best game I've ever seen him play. He got all those upgrades on time. I, I know I'm, I'm criticizing it like I'm doing a coaching here, but uh, he is the fourth ranked Zerg in the world, despite the regular uh, sort of inefficiencies he may demonstrate. But when he has adrenal glands on time, he's so focused on prioritizing that creep spread and transitioning from ultras to broodlords back to ultras to force a certain weaker unit composition and then using that tech tree to smash what Clem has left. Well, that's how it's done. Clem making uh, a lot of good old micro mistakes that add up. Mistakes that uh, rarely you see from him, but uh, Shin taking full advantage of every uh, tiny little error. Ugh. <sighs> What a game. Well, let's see if he can repeat it. And it, it wasn't like a gimmick. He didn't get a cool build that caught him off guard. No, he just outplayed him. Pretty much start to finish from the first Reaper to the last Ultras. That was Shin's game to lose. So many main ones. Hmm. I wonder, like, I'm, I'm racking my brain. I guess sometimes, everyone has these days, where, like, you, you play a certain style and you're so used to it, you just stick with it, and you'd rather try to fit that square peg in a non-existent hole than try to invent a new one. But, and Shin has historically really been that, like, Rainer-esque attrition zerg. But that was patience and pragmatism, and like I said, Sarah is who I'm reminded of. So, to be honest, and to, to break the fourth wall a bit, I'm always a little reluctant with Shin games because most people, either subconsciously or actively, think of him as a second-rate Zerg. And by second-rate Zerg, I mean someone who isn't named Rogue, Dark, Serral, or Rainer on a good day. But... Uh, well, okay, it's one game. One very good game, but we may have to reevaluate The dance. As the Reaper, not want to get taken out again. Up. Oh. Going for that creep tumor. Everyone knows Clem wants the creep tumor. I do. I do stand by the, uh... We need the Evo Chamber battery packs. I, I don't... I, I've got to do the math. Too much factorial again. Oh no, never mind. Run to bounce, but always good to have friends. The math on how much it takes to have renewable Viper energy via Queen Transfuse. I think like two Queens to one Viper. Transfuse 50, consume is uh, 150 health. Okay, stop it. Talk about the game, not ratios. Hellions sitting on the edge of the creep. Zergling speed done, a much more standard uh, speed timing, but he manages to sneak by again! Oh no! Clem loses several SCVs, and there's not enough Marines to actually stop this! The Hellions coming back across the map. Six SCVs, seven, eight, and several Marines. And the Hellions are dragged back. And the mules are mining. A disastrous start. And another well-timed Zerg rush from Shin will earn him a massive income lead. A massive worker lead. And that's one of the most frustrating things. Not once, but twice. That happening. Shin finds the timing. And Terrans have a tendency to get greedy. I know. Sounds redundant, but... Uh... Sending Hellions out immediately? That leaves you... 
usually players will not commit to the Ling run by. Oh, Brenda! I will avenge you. Oh, that was just Karen. It's fine. Okay, we might not avenge you. <clears throat> Sorry. So Terrans have a tendency to just rally the Hellions out. So the downside of sending the Lynx is if they get spotted, you've cut into your own economy for probably no reward. I Man, negative reward, because you've cut into your own economy and the Zerglings did not. So it's worse than just not building anything. But when they do work, and I don't blame Shin for gambling a little against the world champion. Well, it certainly pays off. Clem, what I, it feels like a bit of a swerve into a Hellbat push. He wants to get something done now, ideally before Shin can compound his advantage. And here come the Hellbats. Stim is already done for the Marines as they work their way down the ramp and into the third base. Down goes another Queen and another Roasted and the Hellbats will protect and the, the Medivacs are healing them. This is doing a lot of damage, Clem. Already caught up in workers. He had that 3cc, remember. And the drones caught in the corner. Just a counterattack on a Shin. Desperate to do anything. The drones have been slaughtered. Some SCVs in turn. Another good counterattack timing. But there's just not that much back at home. He has enough to fill up two medevacs. The Zerglings try to get in. But the Marines hold the gates. And the SCVs will drive them back. Marines. Gonna try to target down a few more drones. 22, 23... And that is a lot of damage. And and the queens, not even, there's only three queens left. Not even really enough to reliably take out these medevacs. The damage has been flipped. Clem's timing, decisive. And he finds exactly the sort of situation he needs to maximize those early game units. The Hellbats, in Hellbat mode, somewhat confusingly, can be healed by the medevacs because they're technically biological units. So, using those to tank for the limited roaches and queens while the marines gun down all the lings? A remarkably effective strategy, really taking advantage of that low-tech zerg. And unlike last game, Clem now has very much the ability to keep map control. He has the economy. He has the medevacs already out there. The upgrades aren't... There's not much of a disparity. Shin actually has plus one carapace, but he just got supply blocked. So the Marines stimming in. Another queen will be gunned down. And throws a roach in there as well. There are more Marines lurking to the north side. A few more drones come down. Marines see an opportunity. One one about to complete. Another drop comes in. Medivac slurps him up. And the main base. And he drops right back out with the Medivacs. And I think this is why Shin expanded to that north side in the first place. That are just avoiding uh, the Reaper, but... Oh my. Put your Marines in, put your Marines out, put your Medivacs in, and shake a ball about. Okay, it's bad. It's really bad. This is... It's only getting worse. Shin doesn't have enough units to force Clem back with a counterattack. He barely has enough units to fight these medevacs. Or, or the marines in them, more accurately. He has no way to kill the medevacs. Besides two queens that were rebuilt. So Clem just running him around right now. Good ideas from Shin, but... The supply does not really tell the story. The fact that the roaches are... Looking up at units that they can't hit with nothing else... Oh. They'll expect one of us in the wreckage, brother. Twelve Ravagers on the way. Shin. Looking. He's just gonna try to survive. If he can crush an army and do a massive counterattack, that's his best opportunity now. Because he will never financially recover. Like this. Mm. A Roach Ravager. Another drop slurped up. Shin with a massive counterattack. Might be able to catch some of the reinforcements. It might not matter. Here we go. Marines at the back. Marines at the third. Marines at the fourth. 
and Marines back at home. The tanks on the high ground. The boys will be pulled. The last stand for both sides. But I think Clem has much more solid ground as the Marines are tearing through everything at the natural. The third base will be completely gone. The Roaches and Ravagers are trying to break through, but there's three siege tanks. He's slowly chewing through them. But, well, the Marines, oh wow, there's four tanks over here. <laughs> okay. It looked a little dicey for Clem until you realize that he has plenty of siege tanks back at home. That, that tank pops out of the wrong side of things. We don't mind gonna burrow. But the tanks are just chewing through. And we're going to game three as Clem strikes back. He's able to turn it around quickly and decisively. And he takes home a victory. All right, all right. Shin got a little greedy and uh, I think overestimated his position just a bit. That's the difference partially between losing those Hellions early and uh, being able to combine them to the push. That's why it was such a desperation move in game one, sending the Hellions in. Because they don't have to be the early damage. They can also be part of a push. They can al always be at the edge of the creep. It really is um, a huge gamble to send the Hellions in and try to get drones. Uh, especially early in the game. We chrono boost through. See how they open up. Everybody building on their side of the map. Not always a guarantee with these two. Pool first again. Out of Shin. Try to catch Clem off guard. He succeeded. Just not well enough every time. Great games thus far. Really solid. Both players making mistakes, but mostly strategic mistakes. Just do I... Strategic is in deciding when to attack with what, as opposed to how. Like, do I go for a counterattack? Do I drone up? Do I go for a hellbat push? Or do I sit back and defend? Like Stuff like that. The strategery of the game. And only players of this caliber really get to enjoy it nearly as much. But And Clem adapted. He's now got an SCV waiting to see if the Zerglings come out. Well, okay, he had that in game one as well. Shin pushed away the SCV with two Zerglings and then hid six more behind it. And that's how he was able to do so much damage. The Reaper is looking for those Zerglings. But Shin, with the mind game, knowing Clem knows that, did he even build? He built two lanes total. So instead of trying to slip Zerglings by the Reaper, he's going to get a bit more of an economic advantage instead because he knows Clem is going to be very afraid of that counterattack. So very Zerg-like adaptation there and uh, a calculated gamble that pays off. Gets three or four more drones early. The workers will fight. The Reaper, I'm sure, will take offense, but the Queens will bar the way. Does he do the engineering bay? No, he doesn't have the minerals. Are those Cyclones? Yes. The more important question, why are those Cyclones? Explain yourself. I don't think he will. Cyclone and a Hellion on the way? Uh... Huh. Maybe trying to take advantage of a late Zergling speed? But Shin did not slouch on the Zergling speed. It's not much later than you'd usually see it in a one hatch expand. So, um... Well, Again, trying to find the damage or, or counter what Shin is likely doing. But Shin has adapted. And I think we'll get the better end of things. There's no energy for transfuse, unfortunately. Forced to pull back. He's trying to bait the Cyclones in. Zergling speed is done, and a lot of Zerglings are completed as well. And he's on creep. He should be able to get the wraparound on the clones. And he does. 
And that's quite an expensive, expensive choice that just does not pay off. Gets the Reaper as well. And gets away before the Hellions can punish him for it. Shin. Getting the jump on Clem yet again. Overlord taken down, but it will spot the third command center, of course, in the main. Clem not out too much for those clones, though. Again, Shin will be able to hold on to his creep spread a lot easier than if Clem just uh, had your more standard Hellion Banshee. Um, oh, there's a split second there where he could have maybe darted by. But he uses a volley on the queen. The Zerglings are in place. Going to deny some creep tumors. I think Clem thought about it and then decided, you know, killing five or six drones is probably not going to be as good as keeping the creep spread under control. Because Shin, with his 700 APM, seems to be using it more and more efficiently as uh, we get, as he improves. Also really cool to see some noticeable improvement from some players who aren't really thought of, aren't quite in the top 10. Shin and Australia, I think, are, are two uh, key examples. Both of them playing even better and continually kind of improving on uh, their unique style. Though a very different one. Shin, a, quite an aggressive Zerg, whereas Australia, a much more defensive Protoss. And not all, not turtly, not passive, just defense. Zergling counter will meet with the Marines. Gonna try to get some of the SCVs. Decides against it. Unlikely to get even one. Bunch of roaches on the way. Roach speed on time. And the queens, oh, caught out with the early warning system intact. Some roaches should be out. Yeah, moves to defend. No scan quite yet. Going for the fourth base, potentially. We'll get a little damage as he stims his way by. And without roach speed, I don't think he can close the distance in time. He doesn't. Doesn't quite get the... Uh, finishes off the drone at the fourth base, but loses six SCVs, mostly to his own siege tank. I think some zerglings were in there, but the siege tank doing the brunt of the damage. He got nine kills. I don't think you count friendly fire as kills, but probably should. One one about to complete for Clem, giving him 10, 15 second advantage over uh, Shin's timing. Gets another cancel on the fourth base. And denying that fourth base really makes it difficult for Zerg to, to reach that critical mass. That uh, avalanche of Ravager Zergling. He can still build a uh, biological ton of units. But, well, the supplies are quite a story as well. 121 to 159, Shin. Only 59 drones. So, very much intent on doing damage here. But there are two siege tanks jammed into the corner on the high ground. He gets a volley off. Doesn't quite get the backline tank. Tries to hold the line. That tank... Pretty good. Metavax doing damage on the other side. SCVs will have to be pulled. Clem backs away from the corrosive bound. A lot of SCVs transferring through the Roach Ravager, but the gates are closed. The depots are not opened for them. Meanwhile, the Metavax, uh, I believe, just taken down. One of them with nothing inside makes its way back across the map, which kind of tells the story. Clem now down to 50 workers. He just didn't have enough. The Roach Ravager is grinding through it. Two twos on the way for both sides. I love how both of them brawled it out. And then the moment they get a breather, like, oh yeah, upgrades. Because the game probably isn't going to end this moment. But uh, a few moments later, with an upgrade advantage, it very well could. So Clem takes a big hit. And Shin is able to shore up his economy, but that's quite a bio ball. The corrosive bow, great split. Concussive shell now done, gonna make it that much harder to actually engage this army without taking critical losses. The medevacs are low on energy. Not all the Marines and Marauders are healed up. Siege tank gets a hit. And, ooh, corrosive bow 
at risk of killing the orbital command. Got to be very careful with that. Army supplies are pretty close to even. And that is Marine Marauder against Roach Ravager Zergling. SCV's pulled, splits the Red Sea. Pulls back again. Another wave of corrosive bite. Trying to grind through the front line. He's stutter stepping past the Biles. Chasing down some of the Roach Ravager. And Clem is on the chase. Another Ravager, another few Roaches, trying to tag as many as possible with the concussive shells. Picks up one medevac and head towards the fourth base. Now down 17 SCVs, but the siege tanks are in place, and the bio army has reached that critical mass that's almost impossible to deal with, with just a conventional Zerg army. You need something more. You need infestors, you need lurkers. Hydras might help. Banelings wouldn't hurt. But without hive tech, this could be dicey, as now Clem has retaken some control. He's got the medevacs, which very difficult to chase down. Just has to deflect them. Shin has to be... It's so hard to partition your units. And he doesn't have that much creep spread to give him advance warning. The overlords are few and far between. So it, it's very hard for Shin to have the right units in the right place before he needs them. He has to react to Clem. And that gives Clem some breathing room. But now there's a hive on the way, a lurker den as well. There's a timer on Clem at the moment. Because he doesn't have a ghost academy, doesn't have liberators. He has some tanks, but those are a half measure against hive tech Zer. So he saw, he saw the hive on the way, yes. So he knows he has about two minutes until things start getting significantly more difficult. And that is why he unseiges and is going forward. He's not maxed out, but 2-2 is done. He's not building any SCVs, but the fungal! And he drops down the corrosive bile. A wave of marines, uh, marines and marauders is taken out, but those siege tanks have fully sieged up, and waves of artillery fire are just blasting the Zerg apart. Most of those marines are real. Some of them are changelings. A bunch of overlords there as well. Down goes a medevac, gunning down some more of the drones. Clem into the mineral line. The tanks will continue moving forward. Shit is supply blocked because he had too many overlords in the midst of everything. I don't know what was going on with that. Nine more overlords on the way. Got to be very careful. Trying to drag him into the tank fire. But Clem knows it's not going to get easier. He doesn't have any other tech behind this. Just plus one mech weapons. The infestors are regaining energy. He managed to maintain most of them. And now, between a rock and a hard place. Knocks out one more tank, but there's more behind it. The alleyway up the rocks. I'm not sure who it's favoring more. Obviously, you want to minimize. Oh, he might be able to save the tank, but not quite. Those infestors are regaining energy. Shin has not found the... Uh... Clem just opens up the rocks. Shin has not found the space. Oh, no, no, there's Fungal. Gets a hit. Another Fungal. The medevac's already low on energy. Splits back. The tanks are firing. But more fungals come through, softening up the Terrans. The Ravagers, there's no more roaches in front. The Ravagers are taking direct hits now from the tanks. But the Marines and Marauders are thinning out dramatically. What a close fight. The medevacs are almost out of energy. But the Marines are non-existent. And Clem is forced to retreat as Shin holds by the skin of his weird Zerg teeth. The medevacs, a, a very key point is that Shin didn't get any Vipers, and he's just now getting Hydras. So Clem delayed that Hive tech just ever so slightly. But not so much that it won't be a threat. He didn't take out the base. He didn't kill that many drones. And now Lurkers are in production. This is the main command center floating over to the third base. And that is not a good sign for the Frenchman. There are 13 medevacs out there. There's barely more than 13 bio units underneath. Shin has been doing a great job. Like, he's picked, he, he has not taken, he's taken every fight that he could reasonably trade and retreated tactfully from the ones he couldn't. He's managed to deflect the medevacs. And, well, the lurkers. <laughs> Dude, I'll transfuse on the extractor. A fake drop. This is what it's come to, but now he's gonna lose his medevacs to Parabomb. Oh no! 
Oh my god, well that he's freeing up supply. Uh, oh no, the lurkers. The lurkers eviscerating the Terrans. Half the Metamax are dead. The other half are badly bruised or wish they were. The Viper's pulling a tank and Shin. Gonna drive this back again. The bio army continues forward. Another fungal comes through. The Hydras are with the army. There's no tanks behind this. There's plus three carapace against plus three weapons. The spellcaster control from Shin has been top notch right up until he ran that investor directly into the army, but otherwise really good. A wave of Corosabal knocks out a medevac because they're not even behind the lines. They're out of energy. And I think he's done it. He's pushed Clem all the way back. GG, Shin takes down the world champion. And some great, like, no asterisk. Some just really solid Zerg. Keeping control where he could and giving it up where he couldn't. And Clem putting the pressure on in that final game. But Shin holds it together and he drives him back. He makes him respect Vipers and Infestors and Ravager. So many different steps to bring it together. But uh, he's able to walk the walk this time around. And Clem... Little micro mistakes adding up and unable to find that uh, late game dominance that he so often enjoys. Well, speaking of enjoying, I hope you enjoyed this series. I certainly did. I thought it was going to be one side. Uh, probably the other way. <laughs> but here we are. So there's one thing I hope you can always expect, though, which is good games for the fans. So if you got the means and motivation, be awesome to check out Patreon or YouTube membership. Um, but I hear liking and subscribing is still free, at least for now. So thank you for what was it, fourteen forty-eight, Jimmy? Oh, thank you. Yes. Uh, I hope I made your day a little bit better. I'll see you next time. Good luck. Have fun. Congratulations to Shin. Make sure to look out for more. And uh, thank you for watching. Stay chill.